So you're serious about a new milking parlor. You may want to consider a parlor from Tech 4 Ag, Technology for Agriculture. One of the reasons you may want to think about Tech for Ag is our CIP receiver combination group, clean in place receiver combination group, the group right behind me. What's so special about the group? All of you are familiar with vacuum wash systems. Open sink in the milk house, hot water, all the steam getting into the air. You turn the pump on, suck the water out. You have no control of how the water runs through the system. Every so often the moisture trap swaps out, system shuts off. You are at breakfast, you don't know about it. The CIP receiver group is a controlled system. It's a closed system. The tank you see behind me, the receiver itself, is a rather large receiver for milking. But obviously it's also the CIP tank for the washer. The tank is closed. When you push the button, start the wash up, the input group opens. Hot and cold water comes in, or only hot water during the detergent cycle. After a minute or two, and literally only after a minute or two, the tank is filled with how much water you need. The system closes, seals up, the milk pump starts, and the vacuum pump starts at the same time. It's a pressure wash system, not vacuum wash, also known as a push-pull system. So what's happening? The milk pump is the heart of the system. It takes the wash water, pushes it through the plate cooler, past the milk tank, comes right back to the group, but it passes the group by and goes straight into the milking parlor. So we're delivering the wash water under pressure into the milking parlor and only in the parlor slowly the vacuum from the low line takes over and sucks the water back out in this case a four inch line and brings the water back to the receiver group in the milk house so it's a push-pull system it's way more aggressive than a vacuum system it works faster and it cleans extremely well. Yeah. This particular group is built to support a double 30, rather large parlor. It's going to New York, Albany, New York. The normal group is about half the size, but here's the fun part. Yes, it's a large receiver, but to support the wash system for a double 30 parlor, it's a rather small receiver. We are estimating we'll be washing up with maybe 100 gallons per cycle versus 180 to 240 gallons for a vacuum wash system. Let's assume we're going to wash up with 100 gallons times three cycles, that is 300 gallons. On the other hand, that's only half the wash water you would have in a vacuum wash system. But if you add those water savings up over a year, you are saving at least 100,000 gallons on a smaller power parlor and up to 300,000 on a larger parlor like this one in a year. Less water cost, less detergent cost, less energy cost, less acid cost, and certainly appreciably less wastewater. A little later in the story, we'll show the group in operation, go through the technical details, exactly how does it work, how do you service it, what can go wrong, etc., etc. For now, let me just give you a quick overview of how we designed the group. First of all, there's the pipeline washer, Heritage Pipeline Washer, and it's the latest and the most advanced washer you can possibly get your hand on nowadays. The fun part of it is that you never go inside to do programming. This one, you throw a switch, the screen comes alive, and you simply change the seconds. Air injector open so many seconds, air injector closed, detergent pump runs for so many seconds, acid pump runs for so many seconds, etc., etc. Very, very easy to program. Next are two frequency drives. Once again, 
They are the latest drives on the market, built in Germany, and the frequency drive runs, in this case, a 10 horsepower milk pump. Not only does the frequency drive regulate the speed of the pump, but it protects the pump at the same time. The frequency controller picks up the problems, shuts the juice off. Now, why two frequency controllers, variable speed drives, whatever you want to call them? It has to do with large dairies. You cannot be down milking at any time. When we understood you milk 24 hours a day, three times a day, seven days a week. If something happens to this drive, there's a twist lock plug. You undo it, pull the spare out, redo this one, shut the power off on this drive, turn the power on on that one, and you're back in business. No tools required, no other training required. As long as we're talking about the frequency controllers controlling the pump, there's a second standby pump. So this particular customer ends up with two 10 horsepower pumps. The pump is not bolted down, so if something goes wrong with the pump, you undo a few clamps. In this case, you better get a second guy, because that pump weighs about 200 pounds. Lift the pump out, put the second pump in place, redo the clamps, and you're back in business. Our regular group has one milk filter, 4 inch by 33 inches. This one has two, because of the number of cows, obviously. Other than that, not much else to talk about other than the input group. As you can imagine, during the milking, the group has to be tightly closed. For washing, it has to open automatically, close automatically, and seal. And we do that with this group. Hot water valve, one and a quarter inch, by the way, not the typical half inch or three quarter inch everybody else uses. Cold water valve, and then the chemicals come right from the top and mix with the water as needed. The group opens automatically. Once the water level sensor says we have enough water, the group closes automatically. Vacuum pump starts and milk pump starts. You may be wondering why this group is so tall. So the operator hardly able to reach the screen up there. In the installation, this group will sit in a pit. Let's just say as little as 12 inches deep, as much as 30 inches deep. That depends on the lay of the lint and the size of the parlor. So by the time we are done in operating, the screen will be, or the whole pipeline washer, will be right in front of the milker. This group comes to you exactly like you see it now. The group is completely pre-assembled here. It's tested. We ship it, drop it in the pit, and connect the lines. Vacuum line, low line, hot and cold water line, electricity, whatever. But the group, the group is pre-assembled and tested in the factory. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, pull a calf, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. I need somebody with arms strong enough to wrestle a calf and yet gentle enough to hold his own grandchild. Somebody to call cows, tame cantankerous machinery, come home hungry, have to wait lunch until his wife is done feeding visiting ladies and then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon and mean it. So God made a farmer. God said I need somebody willing to stay up all night with a newborn calf and watch it die. And dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can calm a first-time heifer, repair a broken gate, and can help his kids build a treehouse from old pallets and feed sacks. 
who from planting time to harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon, then painting from tractor back put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God had to have somebody willing to ride the ruts at double speed to get the hay in ahead of the rain clouds, and yet stop in midfield and race to help when he sees the first smoke from a neighbor's place. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, and yet adaptable enough to computerize his herd production and expenses, and gentle enough to stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadowlark. It had to be somebody who would plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and strain the milk, and replenish the self-feeder, and finish a hard week's work for the five-mile drive to church. Somebody who would bail a family together with the strong, soft bonds of sharing, who would laugh and then sigh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his child says, I want to spend my life doing what Dad does. So God made a farmer. Part two is coming up, that's the technical details if you're interested. In the meantime, you want more information, call us, numbers on the screen, or visit the website www.tech4ag.com. Lots of more details about this group and lots of other wonderful things. Appreciate your time.